October 21st, day 21 of Occupy Los Angeles, and you're watching Inside Out News. Yesterday, Occupy Los Angeles had some issues with the city in regard to the farmer's market that sets up every Thursday here at City Hall. There was essentially a bit of miscommunication between the city and the occupiers. According to the organizers here, the occupiers moved their tents off of the South Lawn so that the farmer's market could be set up in the morning. Around 2 a.m., the fire chief, or no, the LAPD came and told the occupiers that they did not have to move after all. So they moved back on uh, to the South Lawn. The, farmer mar the farmer's market vendors came and had nowhere to set up. So they had to set up on the east side of the park and across the street. I spoke to one of the vendors yesterday, uh, which is uh, Thursday. Every Thursday is the farmer's market. And she showed some concern about what is going on over here. Uh, this was, this was uh, off, an off-camera conversation that I had with her. But basically, her concern was in terms of health hazard. There's a lot of people here, uh, sanitation issues. Also, she's concerned about monetary issues. For the vendors, she's saying, uh, since the occupation has been here, uh, there's been less people coming to the farmer's market to purchase fruit, vegetables, uh, or food. In this case, uh, she was a food vendor. So she's concerned that so long as the occupation is here, people are gonna be less inclined to come to the farmer's market because they see all the tents and they're worried about the health issues. The issue between the farmer's market and the occupiers and the city has not been resolved. They have until next 30, Thursday to resolve the issue to see how they are going to work out the situation with the farmer's market here on the South Lawn and the occupiers. Part of the issue is that there are so many tents here that it's difficult for the occupiers to move their tents to another location. The other issue is that the farmer's market has been here every Thursday for, for a very long time, longer than the occupation has been here. We'll see next week what happens if there is some sort of compromise that can be made between the occupiers here and the farmer's market. Occupy Los Angeles has not had an Occupy-led march all week. The marches that have been here have been because of other organizations organizing their members. This week we followed the teachers from the United Teachers of Los Angeles. They led a at least a 500 member march from City Hall over to the LAUSD headquarters where they occupied in front of the headquarters. That was entirely organized by the teachers of the Los Angeles Unified School District. About 40 members of the occupation went on this march over there and we did an extensive coverage of the situation with the teachers in the Los Angeles Unified School District. The other big march that was here was part of the May 1st Coalition, which is a, an immigrants' rights group. The major unions, the SEIU, was part of this march. And some of the uh, sub uh, union of the SEIU, the United Long-Term Workers, they camped out across the street in the square, the Fletcher Bowden Square. About 40 people were there occupying part of the union. Aside from those two marches, Occupy Los Angeles has not had 
a, a big march of their own. Yesterday, I went on a march that included eight people and two journalists, myself and a photojournalist. They went over to the Lacers building, which is the Los Angeles City Employees Retirement System. They, there's a, there's a large group that is just coming in right now. Uh, they're, I, I don't, I don't know exactly where they're from. But they've come to the GA. Uh, I, I've, these people have, have not been here all week. Um, let me, I'm going to turn the camera. to be largely a, a, an Asian uh, population here in this in this new set of protesters. Uh, excuse me, excuse me, uh, why are you, what, what oh, group I'm, is actually, this? I'm, I'm, uh, these are Asian Pacific Islanders protesting, uh, but I'm, I'm on the so you probably want to talk about Okay, them. all right. Yeah, yeah. So it's the Asian Pacific Island uh, organization, so this is completely unexpected. They're, they've come for the GA meeting which uh, just started a little bit ago. There was a little bit of chaos at the start of the GA. Um, they're, they're having amplification issues. Uh, but as I was saying, the Lacers uh, march had eight people. They marched around City Hall, trying to bring members of the occupation out uh, to protest alongside. They were unable. I, I followed them around City Hall. Uh, uh, there, there was a group playing guitar, and just hanging out. They did not. They chose not to join the occupiers who, or protesters who marched over to Lacers. Uh, the, uh, um, the leader of the march, she handed a, uh, a list of the demands to Lacers. They were asking for transparency. They were asking for uh, a list of uh, groups that they invest in. That, uh, and this is retirement money that's for the entire city. Public uh, public workers here in the city of Los Angeles are affected by uh, the Lacers uh, retirement system. So, but what they discovered is that they're they're uh, they're investing in, in groups like J P Morgan Chase, Monsanto, uh, which has been controversial because of their GMO, their genetically modified foods, which are not labeled. So they're, they're, they're concerned for the city's retirement plan, where it's being invested. It's also been invested in ExxonMobil, for example, um, and so on. So only eight people went on that march. Today, there was another march. Uh, another protest was the, the Fox News protest. News Corp was today. The shareholders meeting was over at Fox Studios in Culver City. About 30 protesters got on a march that was uh, don't that was a uh, lent to the occupiers by the SEIU. About 30 got on the bus. I went over with them to Culver City and they joined the Good Jobs LA people as well as some other uh, news watchdog organizations such as Free Press, uh, which they brought out oh, close to 200 people, I would say, to the march. Only 30 occupiers went. At the same time, another march was organized going to the Federal Reserve. When I came back, the, a group uh, had said that there was another group over at the Federal Reserve that they were, they wanted, they were recruiting more protesters to go over and join them. So I followed about 20 protesters, uh, mostly youngsters, from the occupation over to federal, the Federal Reserve, which is on Grand and Olympic which is several blocks away from here. It, this is City Hall borders 1st Street, Olympic is past 8th Street. So it's about nine blocks away, uh, at least going south and another two or three blocks going west. So it's, it's a long trek. When the protesters arrived, there was no other group there. There, there was no one waiting for them. There seems to be some sort of miscommunication going on 
the, uh, but within the organization, between the committees. So that group decided not to stay at the Federal Reserve. Instead, they went uh, and marched over to Wells Fargo building and to a Bank of America branch where uh, the, the manager of the branch, uh, not expecting protesters, they, they asked security to lock the doors to keep the protesters out. Uh, whether that was effective is questionable considering that uh, you're targeting a local branch where the employees are what most people would consider to be part of the 99%. They are working class, they are working at minimum wage or just above minimum wage jobs there. Uh, so that's what happened. The occupation movement here is what I would call a crossing point because there are 500 tents here, according to the Los Angeles Times in an article that was published just a few days ago, there are 500 tents here. And yet, if you stand on the corner of Temple and Spring Street, you see only five protesters. So, if there's at least one person in every tent, there should be 500 people here. But there aren't 500 people here. Or if they're here, they're in their tents. But they are not mobilizing. This weekend, there is no planned major march for Occupy Los Angeles. The last couple of weekends, the first day, the first Saturday of the event was a major turnout. You know, there was about 5,000 people at the peak here at City Hall. Uh, the Saturday after that, there was another couple of thousand people here. There was events. There was music going on. Uh, Tom Morello was here. Danny Glover was here. Last weekend was the International Day of Action. There was a huge march through downtown LA, through the financial district. 10,000 to 15,000 people was reported by the LAPD to the organized here. They counted 10 to 15,000 people at the peak, marching through the city, protesting, calling themselves, we are the 99%. This weekend, there is no major event. There is a solidarity march with the police brutality march that was already planned for this weekend that's going to start at Pershing Square. Aside from that, there is nothing else planned. Sunday, Van Jones, uh, Van Jones staffer came by just today to confirm that Van Jones was coming by su this Sunday at 4 p.m. But there's nothing there's no march. There, there's nothing planned on the on the part of Occupy Los Angeles. There's a lot of also mentally unstable homeless people here. They're, they're not necessarily physically causing harm to anyone, but but they are they are certainly in their own world. There's a man here who who wears various hats on his head and 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 just you know speaks randomly to whoever will listen uh, he was wearing, today he was wearing a very interesting uh, hat uh, that had a bra on it uh, there was a woman who was doing her own imaginary TV show with a, a, a cable that she found on the floor um, Jimmy Dore came by today Jimmy Dore is a fairly well-known comedian. He has a show on the local Pacifica radio station, KPFK. It's a comedy hour, politically uh, inspired. They do a lot of impersonations of people in the news. Uh, it's, and he came by to give a, a guest performance for the occupiers at 6 p.m. He and his fellow comedians were accosted by some of the homeless people who are here. One of them stole a mic from one of the comedians. The, another comedian was booed by the people here and, and Jimmy Dore was attacked by a, a homeless woman. Uh, I was told it was more like a love attack, not so much a physical violent attack, but still she came toward him and they, the comedians felt they didn't feel safe, so they left. They, they did, Jimmy Dore was not able to do his performance because he felt unsafe here. So the issue of homelessness in this city has not been dealt with. And what is happening here at Occupy Los Angeles seems to just be a symptom of that underlining issue that is not 
that 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 the city council, that the, the mayor, that the, the officials here refuse to address. That is what to do about the homelessness. How, how do you deal with the homelessness here? Whether you're homeless due to, to poor circumstance or, or by choice, how do you deal with that situation? Homeless people come to Occupy Los Angeles because they know that they won't be arrested, they won't be kicked off because the city council passed a resolution saying that they support Occupy LA. So the police aren't going to remove any of the homeless people from here. But now it, the homeless issue is now an issue that the Occupy organizers have to deal with and figure out. Well, there's certainly a lot of change happening here uh, that I've observed and we'll see what happens over the next couple days, over the next week, if the occupation is able to take control of the situation. As, as we saw earlier, there was a giant group of uh, people, the Asian Pacific Islanders Alliance or something of that nature, came to join the General Assembly. So on the one hand, we have a, a peculiar situation during the day, and yet we still do have uh, other groups who are coming to exercise their right to demonstrate and express themselves as part of the 99%. We will see if those two types of groups can coalesce or find some sort of middle ground. And hopefully, uh, for the sake of the people here and who are working very hard for movement, that it will. We will be reporting as usual. Uh, we may not have a report every day from here on out, simply because there isn't a lot of action going on. But uh, if that picks up, then we will return to our day-to-day -day reporting. Uh, but we'll be here covering Occupy Los Angeles for as long as it lasts. So this is Margot Pia signing off for Inside Out News. Good night.